Hello, hello. We are 13 days away from our next Disney trip. I'm so excited. Prepping for a Disney trip is unlike any other vacation prep because there is so much that goes into it. So I'm gonna take you along over the next week and really bring you behind the scenes into how I get ready for a Disney trip. I'm gonna share how I've budgeted for this trip, how I've mapped out our itinerary, how I structure our park days, dining, how I plan out our outfits. We are gonna talk about everything and how I get ready to pack for Disney because there's a lot that goes into just getting ready to pack. So we're gonna talk about it all. Okay, so I'm sitting with my computer and this is where I have mapped out kind of a rough draft of our itinerary and I type out kind of day by day what parks we're going to, some of our top priorities, any dining reservations I've made. And then once I feel like the rough draft looks pretty good, then I have a printout itinerary. I love a good old fashioned just pen and paper, <laughs> write it down. There is something so fun and special to writing out your Disney itinerary. I can't even explain it, but I love having a hard copy of our itinerary. So I'm gonna do a quick little run through of my rough draft, and then I will move everything over to these little itinerary printouts that I've created. Okay, starting with day one. Well, let me start by sharing. This is just me and my four-year-old daughter. So I am a solo mom traveler. My husband works and isn't always able to travel with us. So I just take my four-year-old. So it's just the two of us most of the time, which is really fun. And this is a split stay resort, meaning we are staying at two different Disney resorts. So we're starting at Old Key West, and then we're gonna move over to the Wilderness Lodge. These are two of my all-time favorite Disney resorts. These are the resorts where when I'm there, I'm like, oh, I'm home. It just, it has that homey feel and I love it. So I'm very excited to be back at both of those resorts. So, okay, jumping back in, day one. Arrival day, I keep things pretty low key. I rarely go into a park on arrival day. Sometimes we might pop in for a little bit, but most of the time, I just plan on a chill resort day. It gives you time to settle into your room, kind of unpack. Maybe we'll go to the pool for a couple of hours, grab a bite to eat, just walk around the resort, enjoy your resort. There's so many resort activities that this is really kind of the perfect day for that in my opinion. So I love to just have a low key day on your arrival day, especially if you've had an early morning flight and everyone's tired, you can take a nap, you can go to bed early, you know, it's just nice to feel rested going into your vacation. So that is our plan for day one. Day two, I'm actually doing something different this time. So we have never been to Typhoon Lagoon. So this is gonna be very different for us. We aren't typically water park people and I don't really know why. We've really enjoyed the water parks when we've gone in the past. So I don't know, I just thought this would be such a fun opportunity to do Typhoon Lagoon because we'll be at Old Key West. So we'll be really close to that bus transfer at Disney Springs and it would just be a really perfect day to do Typhoon Lagoon. So I don't know, it'll be something fun and different instead of starting like day one hard at Magic Kingdom, kind of mix it up and we're gonna start at Typhoon Lagoon. So that'll be another day where because the park is only open from 10 to five, I think we'll probably stay pretty late and we'll do kind of a later afternoon break back in the room. And then we probably won't rush off to another park that evening. We'll probably do some Disney Springs time or again, just hang out at the resort. But because it's gonna be such a jam packed day at the water park and that is our primary focus, I'm not trying to squeeze more park time into that day. This is just a Typhoon Lagoon day. So that is day two. Day three, we are moving over to Wilderness Lodge. And if you're curious how a split stay works, like how in the world do you pack everything up, get to another resort, how do you get your luggage over there, how does that work with nap time if you have little kids, like all the million questions that go into a split stay, <laughs> definitely subscribe because I plan on doing a dedicated video on this trip, vlogging our whole split stay experience and moving from one resort to another and how I personally do it. So definitely stick around for that. 
So that'll be our resort transfer day. And I'm thinking we will pop into Magic Kingdom for a little bit because we'll have really easy access with that boat ride from Wilderness Lodge over to Magic Kingdom. So that is gonna be our Magic Kingdom day. Day four, I think we're on day four. One, two, three, four. Yes, day four, <laughs> we are doing Epcot. And I do have a couple of dining reservations that I'm really excited about on this trip. So we are doing Space 220. And then back at Wilderness Lodge, I have a reservation for Storybook Dining. That is, those are two that we've never done before. So I always try to add in new and different things that we've never experienced. So I'm really excited about those two things. And then day five, I think we're gonna do another split day between Epcot and Magic Kingdom. So this is gonna be a very Epcot Magic Kingdom focused trip, which I love and I'm really excited about. Those are our favorite parks and I'm, I think it's gonna be really, really fun. And then we also have a reservation at Akershus, another princess dining lunch that we're gonna do, which I'm really, really excited about. We've done that one about a year ago, and I remember loving it. So that is gonna be a repeat for us, but everything else is gonna be brand new. So really excited about that. And then day six is our travel day home. So that's how I've structured our trip and how I have mapped out our park time. I feel like it's a really good balance between the water park and resort time, but then also having a good amount of time at Magic Kingdom at Epcot. And we are doing a lot of specialty dining experiences on this trip, which is different for us. Normally we only do quick service and then maybe one dining reservation. So this is like, this is a lot, but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And that is definitely the focus for this trip is all of the fun dining that we're doing, which I think is gonna be a lot of fun. Moving on. One question I get pretty frequently is, when do I start prepping for Disney? And if this is a once a year kind of trip, I am prepping months in advance. <laughs> And I know that sounds silly, but what I will do is, hang on. What I will do is I will keep some little bag or box or corner in my guest room or wherever, and I will keep this little pile and just keep adding things to it over the course of like three to six months before my trip. <laughs> but I feel like it adds to the excitement of you're buying activities for your kids or a new pair of shoes or a new outfit or you wanted to buy a new little park bag, like a little mommy bag or something like anything like that that just feels like really exciting and you're still months away from your trip and you feel silly to start packing that far in advance but go ahead and start creating this little pile. That way, when it is time to start packing, you just pull out this box and you're halfway there. <laughs> you've got all this stuff that you've been prepping for months in advance. And so anytime I go to the Dollar Tree, I'm picking up some activity for my daughter or a little coloring book or some special princess crayons or you know something like that where I can add it to this little pile and or glow sticks or you know and that way when it's time to start packing I pull out this box and I have all these fun activities for my daughter I picked out an outfit for myself you know 3 months ago that I'm still so excited about because I haven't worn it yet but it's for Disney so that is my number one tip when it comes to prepping for Disney World is that it's never too early to start getting ready for your trip and it's really fun to have a designated spot for all of those things to go that way when you have your Disney countdown going it just I don't know it adds to the excitement and the magic of the whole getting ready for Disney <laughs> on that note let me show you the bag that I have set aside for my daughter this is actually gonna be everything that's going in her Easter basket but I figured why not use this as an opportunity to get things for our Disney trip instead of buying Easter specific things and some of these things are Easter specific but why not use that as an opportunity to get Disney travel activities and travel toys and glow sticks and you know all the things that I would normally want to get for our trip so let me show you again some of these things we will not be taking to Disney like this little bubble wand I don't think we'll take that with us 
same thing. I'm gonna fill these with some little, some kind of treat. This, for instance, this is a fishing pole. It's like a fishing game that you can play in the water. So I thought this would actually be perfect to bring with us to the pool. So I thought she would have a lot of fun doing that in the kiddie pool at Old Key West, or if she wanted to do this in the pool at Wilderness Lodge. But that is something that I thought, oh, that would actually be great to pack with us. And it's compact enough that it's not some huge pool toy, you know, that it's gonna be pretty small that we can fit in our suitcase. Um, one of these right here, I thought, you know, this is always perfect. I did get, you know, some little Easter treats. And then I'm gonna fill her little Easter eggs with these little gummies. I have some other little water toys. These are also really fun for bath time, just to have something in the bathtub. So we can bring this to the pool or we can keep this for the bathtub, but I thought those would be really cute. I also have this right here, good old fashioned Etch-A-Sketch. <laughs> I don't think she has ever seen one of these before. And I saw this at Dollar Tree and I thought that is so perfect to throw in my park bag. I have some more of these little notebooks that she can put stickers in, restocked on some of those. I have some goggles. Again, I found these in the dollar section at Target. So I thought that would actually be fun. She has never tried on a pair of goggles before, so she may not be into it. But, you know, again, in the kiddie pool, this would be something really fun that she could at least try. And if she's not into it, you know, I think they were three dollars two dollars something like that and then i also restocked up on glow sticks these are so fun to pull out of your park bag at night obviously disney has all the fun light up glow toys and you know all the things but they're so expensive so just go to the dollar tree and get glow sticks i think one pack was a dollar fifty and you get four those are really fun to have i think the last thing in here is yeah it's just this little book that i thought would be really fun so another kind of easter easter e thing so this is going to be her easter basket i also have a couple of swimsuits a pair of flip-flops and i think that's it so i thought this would be perfect so a lot of these things are going to be great for our disney trip Huge thank you to Merit for sponsoring this portion of today's video. I have been using Merit makeup products for a couple of years now, specifically for Disney. So you have probably heard me mention Merit in several of my past videos. So I'm really excited to be working with them today. The reason I love Merit makeup products, specifically at Disney, is because it makes getting ready in the morning so easy. I can basically do my makeup in the dark while my daughter is still sleeping. <laughs> And when I'm at Disney, I'm wanting a minimal and natural makeup look. And with Merit, I can achieve that in like five minutes, which is perfect when I'm there solo with my daughter and I don't have a ton of time to do my makeup in the morning. My favorite Merit product is probably the Minimalist because I can use it as a foundation and concealer. It's a two-in-one, which is really cool. And it's really great in the Florida heat. These products are vegan, cruelty-free, and they don't clog your pores, which again is perfect for the Florida heat. You can save up to $20 when you purchase a set. Every first order comes with a free signature makeup bag, which is super cute and perfect for travel and every order over $40 ships for free. I'll have these products linked down below and thank you again to Merit for sponsoring this portion of today's video. All right, we're 11 days away and I want to talk about our budget because your budget is obviously a huge piece of the Disney planning process and getting ready for a Disney trip. So I want to share the Disney budget template that I have been using. My husband and I actually created this together a while ago. I really wanted a visual of something I could show my husband, something I could present to him <laughs> that would allow him to see where every single dollar was going and not just this estimated cost of what I thought our trip was going to cost because <laughs> it always ends up being more at the end of the day. You come home from the trip and you're like, whoa, that was way more than what I thought the trip was going to be or what I thought I budgeted for. So I wanted to create an actual template that would do the math for me and something that would remind me of every little thing that I need to budget for, things that I typically forget to budget for. So I'm gonna do a screen recording and let you see firsthand what my Disney trip budget is gonna look like. So here we go. <laughs> okay, so this is what it looks like and I'm gonna scroll down so you can see I have every single category here and then there's also a separate dining tab that we will go over here in just a second. But going back to the main page, I'm gonna start with 
our resort. You can see our first two nights at Old Key West. It is costing $315 per night. I am renting DVC points for this portion of our stay. So that is our grand total for those two nights. And then we are moving over to the Wilderness Lodge for three nights. I got a rate of $398. That was with my annual pass holder discount. That is our grand total right there. And our resort grand total is $1,972.59. And that is reflected over here in my total tab up here in the top. So you can already see all of these numbers are automatically totaled right here. So if I were, for instance, to add in Memory Maker, let's just say $100, you can see that updates the total cost right there. We are not gonna be doing Memory Maker this trip, but you can see it automatically totals everything for me. So my grand total is to the penny and I know exactly what we are going to be spending. So moving on for tickets, we are annual pass holders, so I don't have to budget for regular park day tickets, but I am budgeting for a one day ticket at Typhoon Lagoon. So those annual pass holder uh, water park tickets are $49 per person. So post tax, that is $104.86. Moving down, you can see I have a whole category dedicated to Genie Plus. And this is one thing that can be tough to budget for because the price fluctuates fluctuates daily. So you really have to do a cost estimate in this category and maybe try to over budget a few dollars for Genie, but that's kind of the best you can do with Genie Plus and go off of, you know, recent weeks. And then moving down, we have our travel section. If you are driving, there's a section for gas flights for two round trip tickets for me and my daughter was $539. Um, if you need airport parking, a rental car, transportation to and from the MCO airport, uh, park parking, if you are staying off site and you plan on parking at Magic Kingdom, you would need to budget to park at the park. So that is our travel grand total. And then this is where all of those dining numbers are updated. I actually don't type anything in right here. All of this is automatically updated from my dining tab. So we'll go over that here in just a second. But trip prep budget, clothing, that isn't something we need on this trip. I did recently get my daughter a bunch of stuff a couple of months ago, about a month ago actually. So I'm not needing anything for this trip toys and activities like travel activities we are good to go snacks and drinks this is where i budget for our groceries so for her and i for breakfast and snacks a case of water i typically budget 75 dollars for that and that tends to be kind of that perfect amount for us and then moving over to the dining tab so this is where i can go day by day and plan out my meals and if it's a quick service meal sometimes i'll decide in advance what quick service location we're going to most of the time and on more recent trips i just plan on we'll do quick service i'm not quite sure which one quite yet but i'm just going to for now budget for a quick service meal and estimate kind of what that cost is going to be and so for me and my daughter for usually for one kid's meal and an adult entree is around 25 to 30 dollars so on some of the meals i over budget and do 30 dollars. some of them you'll see i budget for 25 so it just kind of depends so this is our arrival day day two we do our groceries for breakfast and then i'm doing a quick service for lunch and dinner and you can see it actually automatically updates tax so if i were to change this to 30 dollars it's going to add in that florida tax for you so that's one thing that it's really tricky to budget for tax so this template automatically factors that in for you so i'm going to change that back to 25 dollars and that's my total for day two. Day three, same thing, groceries for breakfast, a quick service lunch, and then dinner at Space 220. So I went ahead and looked at the menu, totaled for the kids price and an adult price, and I went ahead and added in $22.80 as a 20% tip. It also factored in tax for me, and then there's my total for day three. So I'm not gonna continue going you know, through every single number here, but you can see I've gone ahead and done the exact same thing for day four, day five, day six, and it's given me these totals for every single day. And it goes all the way down if you have a longer trip. But here is my dining grand total, $594.46. And that is reflected up here as well. So my trip grand total is $3,285.91. Now, part of that number 
For instance, Old Key West. I have already paid that $630. So that was already paid for a couple of months ago in full. So this number right here, a lot of this I have actually already paid. I've already paid my first night's deposit on Wilderness Lodge. So I believe I only owe about $800 left on this uh, portion of our stay. So that's about a thousand dollars of our resort total that I have already paid for. Same thing for our flights. I purchased those a while back, so that's already paid for. So really all that I'm paying for on this trip once we arrive is the remaining balance of my Wilderness Lodge stay, my Typhoon Lagoon tickets, and our dining. So that is pretty much it. So I want to say that's going to cut our grand total in half as to what I'm actually, what I still owe, if that makes sense. But this is the grand total in everything that I have put towards this trip. So I hope that's helpful. So that is what our budget looks like for this specific trip. I'll have my budget template linked down below in the description box. If you want to head over to my Etsy shop, you can download this for 12 bucks. If your spouse is anything like mine, <laughs> This will be a game changer in your marriage. It is so nice to be able to sit down together and have this visual and go category by category, break down every little tiny cost, things that you may not even be thinking to budget for. This template kind of reminds you of all those little things that go into planning a Disney trip. So go check it out. And now being about a week and a half out, I do need to start actually prepping for the packing portion. <laughs> so I need to start thinking through outfits and my daughter's outfits and kind of laying things out. We're in the packing room right now. So this really transforms into like a total packing just explosion in here. <laughs> So I need to start sorting through some things. So I will check back in once I start pulling some things together. Quick pause to say welcome. I'm so glad you're here. If you are new, my name is Becca. I share all kinds of Disney planning content, tips for taking little kids to Disney, and vlogs from all of our Disney adventures along the way. So I'm here to help you make your Disney vacations actually enjoyable and not stressful and how to prep for your Disney trip. So that way you are set up well and you feel confident going into your trip and that way you can have a seamless vacation. So if you are not already subscribed, I would love to be your virtual Disney bestie. Hit that red subscribe button, stick around for more Disney fun and let's jump back into it. All right, we are nine days away from Disney World. <laughs> nine days away. So what we need to do now is we need to pick out your dresses. outfits. Do you want to help me pick out your princess dresses? Yes. Yeah, okay. These are the princess dresses. <laughs> we have quite the collection. So these are some of the fancier ones that I have. And we have a bunch of Only Little Once princess dresses. Ellie wore this Rapunzel one on our last trip. So I think I'm going to leave this Rapunzel one here at home. But I'm very excited about this Jasmine dress. And we also have a new Sleeping Beauty dress and a new Cinderella dress. I actually ordered some garment bags because these are covered in glitter. <laughs> And I realized the other day when Ellie tried these on that our floor is now covered in glitter. So I got some garment bags that are on the way that I can store these in and travel with them. So I think that'll make it a little bit easier, but all right, we gotta decide what to bring. Which day should we wear Jasmine? Should we wear it to Epcot? Yes. You think Epcot would be a good day for this and we can meet Jasmine in the Morocco Pavilion? Yeah. We'll put that right there. And then yeah. Sleeping Beauty or Cinderella for Magic Kingdom. That for Magic Kingdom and that for just Lodge. Where? This one just around Wilderness Lodge? Mm -hmm. Cinderella is for Wilderness Lodge. What about... Okay, so when we go to Storybook Dining, we have Snow White. Would you think Snow White would be a good one to wear at Wilderness Lodge? Uh, yes, we can do that too. That would be good? Yes. So we'll do Snow White, Jasmine, and we need to decide. We need to pick one. Um, Aurora. Aurora. Yes. <laughs> I also have this little dress. Mimi would dress this be cute? Is... We could do this with some like little black shorts. We can wear it to Magic Kingdom. Mm-hmm, that would be cute. We have this dress. I like that dress. All right, I think that's, I think these are the dresses that we'll bring. And 
Then we can pick out some shorts and a t-shirt. All right, here's what I laid out for Ellie. We have begun moving things into the packing room here. So this little Minnie Mouse peplum top that I showed with some little black biker shorts, this little skirt with a t-shirt, a couple of dresses, a couple of little short and t-shirt tank sets. And then I always pull just a pile of like play clothes, nap clothes. That way we have things for her to change into back in the room when we're just hanging out in the middle of the afternoon or if we have an unexpected spill or whatever. I am stocked up with shorts and t-shirts. So obviously I still need to grab all of the princess dresses and everything, but when we change out of the princess dresses because she doesn't usually stay in those dresses all day, then we can change into these things. So. This is what I've pulled for our five night, six day trip. Okay, we are now nine days away. So you can see behind me, I have started laying out my outfits. This is just the first piece of the packing process that I do is start pulling out outfits and just go day by day. But let me show you what I've laid out for myself. Now that I have Ellie's outfits, I think pretty good for the most part. I think, I think she's good. So let's move on. <laughs> First, one really important thing that I always start with is I print out the weather for whatever month we are traveling. So obviously we're still nine days away. So much can change <laughs> in the next nine days, but it's looking like it's gonna be sunny. There's always, you know, a chance of a thunderstorm any day, but it's looking like mid 80s with a low of mid 60s is kind of the average. So that is what I'm basing these outfits off of. I'm doing a couple of athletic dresses, athletic skirt and tank a pair of denim shorts and a tee and a tank just in case I want to you know change middle of the day if I get really sweaty or you know it's always nice to have something extra another athletic skirt another athletic tank and then this is always my go-to travel outfit for our last day that I can go to the park in but also it's really comfortable to wear on the airplane so it's this like t-shirt tank style dress and it has built-in shorts with pockets it's just like a long t-shirt basically and then I wear this little bralette under it so it's really comfortable but I figured this time I am going very comfortable, practical, <laughs> that athleisure kind of wear, you know, I normally try to factor in some fun new outfits, but this trip, I think I'm just going to go what's comfortable for me and not stress about trying to plan out all new outfits. This is all stuff that I pulled from my closet that I already own. So I feel really good about this. I didn't purchase anything new for this trip. These are all things that I have purchased from past trips or just things that everybody owns in their closet. You know, a plain t-shirt, denim shorts, like a white athletic tank. So it felt good to not spend anything on outfits this go around. <laughs> Okay, I know I mentioned early in this video how I like to keep some kind of bag or a box or a laundry basket or whatever to store things in as we're leading up to our Disney trip. That way when it's time to start packing, you can just pull out this bag or basket, whatever, and you've already got a jump start on your actual packing. So this is the weekender bag that I used on my last Disney trip. And I thought, why unpack this? This is all disney specific things so i just kept it in this bag and i haven't touched it <laughs> so obviously i need to go through it and reorganize things pull out things that i may not want to bring on this trip but i'm just going to go through this bag so you can see everything that i keep disney specific in this bag so i've got some empty packing cube type things I have this little first aid kit. All I need to do is go through and restock this. I think I just need to put some children's Tylenol in here just in case. And I think I'm running low on cough drops. And I think that's it. So this is my little first aid kit. Also our park cooler. And I left a bunch of Ziploc bags and an empty little Tupperware container in there that I can bring with us back to the parks. I have, again, more packing cubes, my electronics organizer case. So all of my chargers are still kept in this little case right here. Everything is organized and there's just a couple of things that I'll need to throw in here. My daughter's tablet charger and my camera charger, phone charger, 
And I think that's it. I have another, another little packing cube. This is what I put snacks in on our last trip. And of course, if you have watched my other prepping and packing videos, you have seen this pouch before. This is where I keep all of my daughter's little activities. And someone made a comment the other day. <laughs> I thought this was so funny. They were like, little trinkety things has become a staple in our home now, thanks to you. And I didn't even realize how often I say that. <laughs> So little trinkety things is a catchphrase around here because that is what's in this pouch, little trinkety things for my daughter. And I can hand her this pouch when we're on the plane, in the room, it keeps her occupied. I have all kinds of stuff in here. Stick around for my packing video and I will go through that little pouch. I have this packing cube. I've got kind of a hodgepodge of stuff. That's another, that's another phrase I think I say a lot. Hodgepodge, do I say that a lot? I've got some mini ears some bows, uh, liquid IV and goodies headache powder. These are just some staple items that I always pack for Disney. Um, one of these, some extra travel activities, coloring activities. What else is in here? We've got lollipops and yeah, just more of the same. I've got, oh, there's where my sunglasses went. They sunk to the bottom of this pouch and I could not find them on our last trip. I was like, did I forget them? I thought I brought them, but they were just in the bottom of this pouch the whole time. And I brought them with me, a packing cube with rain jackets. So again, these are already packed and ready to go. And I just have to throw the packing cube in our bag, which is awesome. That is what I keep in this bag and the bag changes, you know, every now and then I'll switch it up. I feel like I have a jump start on packing because I just left everything in this bag and only pulled out the things that I knew weren't Disney specific. You know what I mean? So anything that I was like, I'm gonna repack this for our next Disney trip in however many months, you know, even if it is a year away, tuck a little bag under your bed, hide it in the back of your closet, and then a year later when it's time for your Disney trip, pull the bag out and you've got a jump start. And it kind of removes a little bit of the stress of feeling like you're starting from ground zero. And that's how I feel right now. I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm already halfway packed. This is awesome. The last thing I wanna share is this bag, and this is where I store all of our Disney summer essentials. So this doesn't come out year round, of course, because our past couple of trips, it has been too cold to even think about pulling this out. So this will be the first trip in a while that I am taking this bag. So all of our little cooling towels, I have kind of a love-hate relationship with these. I think they're good, you just have to keep them wet like very consistently, just know they aren't gonna bring a ton of relief for very long. So you kind of have to stay on top of it. But my daughter really loves these and she likes to play with them and pretend that it's like a scarf, cape, dress up kind of item. So, you know, a two in one uh, product right here if your little one likes dress up. <laughs> I also have my misting fan. Out of all the fans I've tried, this one is my favorite. I feel like it actually brings relief because of the cooling part of this. So you fill this little top part up with water and then you can control if you want just the fan or if you want the fan and the mister on. So I really do enjoy this one. Uh, this one right here, it basically just blows a little bit of warm air on you. So I don't recommend that one, even though it's super cute. And then, oh, that got in there, extra little sunscreen. And this is the stroller fan that I use. This one is pretty good. I'm sure there are better stroller fans. I'm thinking I'm gonna invest in maybe something different just to try something new. This one is pretty good. I feel like this is very specific to certain strollers that you know this would be able to work where you can kind of wrap it around the stroller but it didn't work great with my travel compact stroller there just wasn't a great spot for it and i could never i don't know i never fell in love with it so even though it's good i ended up carrying it like this more than i used it on the stroller so i would recommend this one out of all three of these, so I'll have this one linked below. So I do think this one is really good for the Florida heat. We are officially one week away, and the last thing I'm gonna do, and the last thing I'll include in this video, is my grocery list, because that is one thing that I like to prepare in advance. That way, about 24 hours before we leave, before our arrival day, I can go ahead and place that order on Amazon. I know there are a lot of different grocery order, grocery delivery services that you can use. Personally, I've just 
used Amazon because that's what I'm most familiar with. You can go the Whole Foods route or the Amazon Fresh route. Both are pretty much the same. I found that there's more options with Amazon Fresh. A lot of things tend to sell out at Whole Foods and you're limited to a specific location in that store. So I like to go with Amazon Fresh. I have pen and paper on my little toddler table and chair set here. And I'm gonna go ahead and write out my grocery list. All right, so the first thing I always do is blueberries. Ellie loves blueberries for breakfast first thing in the morning. And I usually do another fruit option. We'll do bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. <laughs> Does anyone else do that? <laughs> I will never not spell bananas that way. And then yogurt pouches, that is, another first thing in the morning kind of item for Ellie. And then we'll do things that I can pack her lunch with. So I normally do cheese sticks, some kind of pepperoni, salami, and I'll either put that in Ziploc bags or I'll find a little prepackaged like lunchable option that I can put in a cooler and that way it's a really easy grab and go kind of thing. I'll also do little clementines. Those are really easy to throw into our lunchbox when we are headed to the park. I'm gonna do a case of water, some kind of protein breakfast bar. I'll just see what the options are. And you know, again, another really quick grab and go thing. I try to always include some kind of protein option, maybe some little protein stick, another just healthier snack, kind of grab and go snack that I can keep in the room. And I also have to think through because our first two nights were in a DBC villa, so I have access to a kitchenette with a microwave, a toaster, an actual refrigerator, and then when we move over to Wilderness Lodge, I won't have those things anymore. So I do have to be strategic about how I plan out our groceries. I might still order some oatmeal though because you can actually take any microwavable item and they have microwaves that you can use down in the quick service areas of, I believe all Disney resorts, no matter whether you're staying value, moderate, deluxe, every Disney resort has a microwave that you can use in their quick service. So that is an option. If you wanna do a packet of oatmeal, you can always bring that down to the quick service and just heat it up and eat it in that little area. So I might do some of that, maybe some little like cracker, uh, like veggie straws or something like that for Ellie. Oh, and applesauce pouches. That is another staple. And I think that's it. So I have blueberries, bananas, yogurt, cheese sticks, salami, clementines, case of water, protein breakfast bar, protein sticks, oatmeal, veggie straws, or some kind of little cheese cracker, and applesauce pouches. One of Ellie's favorite snack bars I can only find at our local grocery store. So I'm gonna bring those from home. I have some lollipops that I bring from home. Obviously you could order anything on Amazon Prime and have it delivered to your resort. When Ellie was really little, I had diapers, wipes, formula, all of that delivered to our resort. And it was one less thing for me to travel with, which is why I love getting orders delivered to our resort. It just makes things so easy. Obviously now what I'm getting delivered looks very different than when Ellie was a baby. Now it's her lunches and just snacks. Maybe if we were doing a long trip, I might have sunscreen delivered maybe some other toiletry products, but I think on this trip, I'm just gonna do the one grocery order. And then when we move resorts, so when we change from Old Key West to Wilderness Lodge, we'll obviously still have a lot of these groceries with us. A lot of these items need to be refrigerated. So what I do is when I transfer that to our next resort, and let's say I get there at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and our room isn't ready yet, Wilderness Lodge will actually store that bag for me, and I just bring a reusable bag from home to throw all the groceries in, our case of water, and I have all of our luggage, and then this extra bag that I've brought from home, I ask Bell Services to refrigerate it for me, and they keep everything fresh in their refrigerators, and then as soon as our room is ready, I can either go down to Bell Services and pick it up myself, or I can call down from our room and have it delivered directly to me. So. Either way you can go about it, but I love that they offer that. I love that they refrigerate those items for you and I don't have to worry about our yogurt going bad or, you know, all of that stays fresh. So I think, I think that's it for 
groceries. And I can even go ahead and add these things to my Amazon cart. And then 24 hours before our trip, I can just click order, select the time I want it delivered, and I'm good to go. That way, the day before the trip, I'm not having to think through and try to find this list again. And it's just one less thing to do. But I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna switch things over to the packing portion of this video. So definitely stick around and subscribe if you wanna see how I organize everything and actually start packing for this Disney trip. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.